that was sure. I don't think I touch everything out. So I'm good then. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the September 5th custodian community meeting. Uh, to get things kicked off, uh, we, we we're still keeping this note around. I, I think uh, even as of the the next release that's coming, uh, I think three seven we're still still supporting for now. Um, but still planning on moving on from it this year. We're getting toward the end of the year, so I would think that it happened pretty soon. Um, and I know one of the questions we got in some of the threads in Slack. I know there was some discussion around the next release time. I believe the release blockers are sorted out at this point. Um, the, around the RDS termination was one of them. Um, PPL, I know you, it sounded like you were having some some audio or video issues, but uh, uh, is anybody aware of any blockers? Hopefully it's better. Yep, sounds good to me. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're planning on releasing tomorrow. Uh, Patricia uh, was going to uh, help you on the release, um, and that's currently scheduled for tomorrow a.m. EST. Um, and I'm not aware of anything that I would consider a blocker at this point. Um, All right, that sounds good. Go, Patouche. Hopefully everything is uh, smooth and happy with that. And it, it, the process on being releases is considerably more automated than it ever has been. So uh, it is actually like a, hopefully a five percent on procedure. Yeah, that the last release looked a lot nicer. I saw how much simpler the release checklist got. I thought, nice, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, I'm excited to um, hop on and see the process. Never got a chance to kind of go through that, so. That sounds good. Uh, okay, and um, Pratush, since we were talking with you, doing some of the release, I, I know uh, on the PR and issue side, I know you had the, the glue catalog um, yep. filter. We can talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Does, uh, so, Release, release planning this week, uh, ideally tomorrow. That sounds cool. Um, does anybody else, before we get into PR, individual PRs and issues, uh, does anybody else have any questions, questions, or comments? Is this moving towards, I guess, a more democratized or multiple people able to do releases over time or full automation of the release? Uh we already have multiple people able to do releases. There's definitely like I think I didn't really do a release last year uh, for a while. Um, I know other people did, and it's all it's, it's a move towards both. I think it's the right answer. Like we are trying to automate it and eventually, ideally, get humans out of the loop as much as possible. But that is a so that's a long term goal and aspiration. But we're not quite there yet. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a random. A side discussion, but if you're, I mean, I mean, this is probably the, the place for those. Uh, so, uh, in that context, um, what what needs to be, what is remaining on getting to no humans in the loop releases? I guess because we've made significant progress. Um, the the human in the loop process is um, effectively going to be before the release creating a PR that's updating dependency graphs and, and data sets. Um, and then it's more than likely a human has to go and fix whatever issues come out, out of that. And then as a follow up to that, there's a notion of doing the release just on a cron job. Um, and the only thing that's actually remaining there is actually the manual, the manual updates to the change log um, to actually uh, you know, if commit messages aren't always great, and I think we could probably fix that. To be honest, we could automate that part if we just had a bot, like a a bot on PRs that like check pull request titles uh, and commits. So I think we can get there pretty. We're pretty close, to be fair. Um, and then the last bit is just getting rid of secrets. Um, at least on PyPy, they now have OIDC authentication so that way we don't even have to have a static secret anymore in the repo to do the publication so um that's about it as far as so it's it's it, it all seems very much uh in reach but we're not there yet so it, it the the hopeful goal the the 
brass ring in this case is that you would say, okay, tag the release and then automation just goes out and makes it, but we're not there yet. Uh, it's something that we tag the release. It, it would be, I think the, the end goal is that there is a set schedule where the release just goes out. And unless there's like an issue filed with a release blocking tag, that it just goes out. Even better. Yeah, so that would be as long as tests are passing, there's no release blockers, we hit a certain time and it just does a it just bumps the patch numbers on all the all the custodian projects and does the release then. I, I will say there there's also a notion there of running the functional test against multiple providers. Um, mm. currently we do functional tests against AWS at the moment, but um, we're looking to help support from directly from some of the cloud providers on getting functional test accounts and other providers um and in some cases through cncf in some cases direct um but currently we only do it aws i'd like to get gcp in a, on that mix that may come that access may come through cncf and then uh oci may come direct with them it uh there's a team there that's been working on oracle support and um they they have that as a item in, in their backlog Sounds good. Uh, anything else? Uh, any questions or comments on the release process or timing plans? All right, then it's uh, it's PR and issue time. Uh, and because Pratyush, I know we uh, we had a little bit of back and forth about this, and I was out and let it hang for a bit. Uh, but I know you had this uh, this PR for the glue catalog, the KMS key filter. Um, I was on the fence about this, uh, how to respond about it, and that's where that's where community meetings are super helpful. Uh, the background is that we've got a glue security config filter today, but usually if we're looking to do KMS key filters, we have a we have a KMS key filter um, with glue uh, with the glue catalog settings. It's a little bit weird because there's both a connection password encryption and a catalog at rest encryption key. So you have, you're have you working with potentially two keys, which doesn't seem to play well with the existing KMS key filter assumptions. Um, but this glue security config filter was doing some weird stuff on the back end where it was, if you matched on a, on a key ID, it was kind of finding aliases and updating the, the existing resource list and dumping out something to resources that JSON that didn't match, uh, that didn't match reality. So I think Pratish, you were saying that it was it was updating resources when you didn't want to, or uh, some of that ID and alias stuff was getting a little mixed up. Is that fair or uh, not covering everything? Yeah, I think the alias issue is on, on AWS. Um, like when we try to put encryption on any resource type, um, if the alias of the key doesn't exist, AWS kind of throws an error um, when you try to use that key. But with Glue Catalog, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, like if you try with alias XYZ key and try to encrypt uh, the catalog settings, that goes through. Um, the Glue Security Config is the filter, which is uh, basically the KMS, which basically behaves like the KMS filter for Glue um, Catalog. But I think it doesn't know uh, how to handle a few edge, edge cases. That that's all. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess one of the questions here is: Do we add a KMS key filter because that's kind of an expectation, or do we go with a? Yeah. Uh, do we try to update the existing Glue security filter? Yep. Yeah. Um, and Glue Security Config, it had something else that you could update to, right? It wasn't just the keys. Um, you were changing something else and that I don't remember. Yeah, that was on the set encryption action type. So there are two settings. And um, even if with the CLI, if you try to change one config, it tends to override the other one because that goes as a blank input in the API. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. 
Okay. So we would want to have the set encryption one look at whatever the current settings are and just override yep. whatever you specified, but keep the right. previous value. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it uh, basically tackles those two things. I was also on the fence with the KMS key filter because I didn't know how to like make changes. The glue security config was a filter on the AWS account resource type, which was extended to glue catalog. So um, yeah, I was not sure how to like go about this issue. Yeah, that does seem a little bit tricky. I'm wondering if, because people expect to see a KMS key filter, if it might make sense to fix or update the security config filter and then have KMS key as an alias to it, or if that's more confusing. Um, does anyone in the group have enough context or uh, passionate opinions to uh, to lean one way or the other on that? Hey, Gabriel, welcome. We're talking glue data catalog encryption if you've got opinions. I mean, if we already have an existing filter for it, does it make sense to just to extend that? Um, would be my thought, but I'm I am not have not uh, I have not very little context to delve in. Yeah, yeah. Is it um, that seems reasonable to me too? I think part of the issue was that I, I mean, Patricia, this seems like your case too. That when you looked at the schema, it wasn't obvious that there was a KMS filter because the name was not what you right. expected. Right. Yeah. So yeah, maybe fixing the existing one and having an alias to it. Yep. All right, let's roll with that. <laughs> and if, uh, yeah, that seems reasonable. If yep. for some reason it ends up not working, then uh, we can follow up with that. Sounds good. But thanks for working on it. Thanks for reporting it. It's good to cover. That was the one from, that was the, the main issue I remember having a follow up on from Slack. Uh, does anybody else have specific PRs or issues you want to talk about here? I have uh, one that's, uh, I don't think it's officially documented or we don't have a PR out for it, but um, yeah. I'll do the link in there uh, under the agenda, oh, okay, cool. the discussion, yeah. If oh, you wanna yeah. click on it, um, AJ. Oh, this guy? Yeah. All right, well, I'll be able to see this here. You get to watch me use Slack, but not use Slack. Uh, okay. I think, uh, oh, okay. The, I think we can jump to the last uh, comment from Steven there. I think uh, just to ground uh, the discussion, I think this is use case. Uh, Steven, if you wanted to read or just describe it to give everyone some context. Yeah, sure. Um... I mean, basically, we're deploying a policy out, which is, you know, talking to service quotas. And uh, the policy is pretty simple. It just requests, um, you know, a, a limit increase anytime that there is a, a quota usage above 80%. Um, we want to basically have that deployed out to all of our accounts um, and regions. Um, we have quite a lot of accounts. And um, yeah, the issue we're hitting now is, yeah, when we deploy this policy out to um, all those accounts at the same time, um, basically with like a rate weekly, um, uh, you know, periodic schedule, um, they all kick off at the same time because basically we're deploying all the uh, all the policies around the same time. And um, it's, you know, it, it seems to be bombarding the AWS service quotas endpoint. Um, we've seen this happen with config before, some other service, you know, endpoints where, you know, if you have many, many requests from many accounts hitting it at the exact same time, um, it can cause, you know, throttling issues. So that's sort of what we're seeing. And um, it was, you know, originally the thought was, um, you know, can we introduce something into the, um, you know, periodic schedule 
to possibly randomize the, you know, uh, cron for like when it runs. So as an example, if we, you know, did daily, it would randomize the minutes and hours. If we did weekly, it would be the day, minute, hour. Something like that is, you know, what we're thinking to potentially address this. So, you know, when it deploys out, it's basically kind of evenly distributing, you know, the executions across some time frame. So if you have multiple policies against the same service and you're using periodic at scale, it's almost always going to be a problem. The, the problem is on, like, I think there's an open question there on, um, yeah, I, I provided feedback in that conversation with regards to like there are limitations on periodic, and if you have a lot of like, and especially if you have a lot of policies and a lot of cardinality, you're almost you're, you're always going to be better off like just providing it some form of compute because they yeah. can get cached on the lookups as well. Um, I think it was just wasn't clear to us uh, when, when, so. Uh, your, recommendation, your recommendation is, hey, don't use periodic. So then what uh, uh, mode do we run it? Uh, obviously not event-based, right? Because these are not uh, anything event-based. So then just, are you saying do it pool-based? pool, pool based? Is that what you're saying? And run it on yeah. some? Yeah, exactly. You do it pool-based, based, and that way you get a cache, and then you don't, you're not pulling. You don't have to deal. Like, you can have that, you know, a thousand policies on a single resource, and it's OK like in that context, whereas if you did them all as periodic, you're going to immediately run into this exact issue. Um, and what you want to provide in terms of compute is open-ended. Like, we, uh, we, don't, we don't dictate what that is. Yeah. There are many options available. Yeah. Yeah, for us, um, that approach would be like a huge shift in how we set up our, uh, our pipelines. Uh, uh, we purposely chose to go with where everything is deployed and run on target's account. Uh, I would say the main uh, reasoning behind that was uh, such that we don't have a single point of failure. Uh, if anything goes wrong, uh, you know, uh, things that got deployed out to target's account, they continue to to operate. I think that was one of the principle that we uh, um, I mean, it's worth think, exploring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood how you got yeah. there. Um, yeah. The I think the question is also on, like, what does it even mean to do the ask? Let's say to do the what? Because to, uh, to do the 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 original request, like, what does it mean to randomize schedule? Mm -hmm. the, the problem mm -hmm. is, is to randomize schedule requires, um, I think. Uh, a granularity on the randomization and we we don't we have to do yeah. that when we go to create the scheduler itself yeah um because we can't we can't do it necessarily when we get the event because we're in the, the runtime constraints of lambda and we're just losing out on uh, available runtime for the cardinality resources um yeah, that's it's... probably the only thing i can think of as the incremental other option okay, sorry sonny you've had your hand raised a while yeah, uh, yeah, I wanted to comment on this in Slack, but I think it's a little easier here. Um, if in order to do some sort of load balancing on like a random policy execution, uh, we would have to know the entire state of all of the potential policies that you're trying to execute anyway. Like what you're asking here is is an orchest a policy orchestrator. Yeah. Um, and that's significantly like that is not just come up with a random uh, time to execute the policies. Uh, I think additionally, like there are tools in C7M like policy conditions where you can use that to evaluate whether or not to execute. Like policy policy condition evaluation happens uh, before any sort of like polling against the API happens. So it's you know for something like service quotas, we're not gonna make those like hundreds of paginated calls. We you literally are gonna evaluate the, uh, you know, whether or not you should be running anyway. So doing things like, um, you know, checking what account you're in or checking what time it is, like you could do that with policy conditions. Um, 
given the way that you've like written policies and from what you're describing, um, deploying to target regions, like that might require like different policies for different accounts, um, or you could use, uh, uh, you could use things like variable expansion, um, to pass the account ID into the policy condition. Uh, so you can still maintain like a single set of policies, uh, using variables to fill it in stuff like that. But, um, I mean, me personally, I, in general, I think it's, it's a no go in terms of like what the ask is here. Like it's just way outside the scope of what custodian can do right now. I mean, it, it, well, it's not outside the scope. It says that we have a defined path to this. We have a very clearly defined path to, to get around us. And like, cause it's, which is use compute and, and poll instead of periodics. Like, because there is a bunch of other limitations on periodics, like, especially when you're dealing with scale, like that, it's just, you're just gonna, you, it's a round square, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, square and around, ah, I, you know, the analogy, you know, like it's hole, these, yeah. these two things you're not compatible, <laughs> like at scale. And when you're talking about, um, using compute so that we can have a cache, um, I'm, I'm guessing because we're using mostly all Lambda base, so we're not really uh, leveraging cache. But when you talk about cache caching, that will only come into place once we start. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing on the same compute where we make uh, uh, different queries, let's say on the same objects, and then then it will cache, and then we don't have to. So yeah. the ca the cache scope is account region service. Uh, sorry, account region resource type. Um, yeah. And your question comment on like distributed versus centralized, like you can still go distributed per se. Like you, you fire up a Fargate container, like how you where you run compute in this context is not mm -hmm. um it's not something that the like that is dictated. It, it is it's very much designed to be flexible because um people run custodian from Jenkins or you know GitLab or uh, Kubernetes or you know, Fargate or big EC2 instance, like we don't, we, we try not to dictate on that because there's a lot of desire around flexibility for that. What we try to be flexible on is how we can provide the authentication and capability. Yeah, there's also uh, cash benefits outside, like, um, I think the obvious uh, benefit of caching is like if you have two EC2 policies, both executing, you know, you only have to run the described instances call once. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also cache benefits across policies of different resource types. So like any time that like, you know, if you're familiar with the source code where we call the resource manager, it'll do a cache lookup to say like, do a security group related filter. Like that's another API call that we don't have to hit. Um, so even in seemingly unrelated resources, like there's still benefits to do that. Mm -hmm. As an, Again, as an example, this... sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, as an example, um, <clears throat> we do exactly all this, like what they're suggesting, where, like you, we run custodian in each account, mm -hmm. uh, but we run it on code build, and then we have our own um, Cloud Watch events that fire off jobs on an hourly, weekday, daily, weekly, these kinds of mm -hmm. schedules, and it just runs it in code build and then says, you know, where we have we have our own wrappers that do, you know, template based dynamic policy generation. But then we also say, okay, now run all the policies that start with, you know, daily dash to pick out the ones that are supposed to run on daily schedule, that kind of a thing. And so then all of our policies that we write benefit from the cache. Because mm -hmm. they're all run in the same context at the same time. Um, but uh, all of them, though, will still be running within a particular uh, uh, target account and not for us yeah essential. yeah I, I mean yeah you can slice it you know however you want right. you could have like like you could have a lambda function like dispatch jobs into the target account you could have you know whatever you know you want to fancy right you could have like assume roles into uh from the the main account there's plenty of different ways to slice it um but i mean for Large accounts, like it's significant the the time savings as well as like the less strain on the API. So centralized versus decentralized is sort of out of, like you can go either way. Like, and I think 
uh, Taj at just really doing central, I uh, started doing decentralized and like firing up compute or like ephemeral compute, either, you know, uh, code build or, you know, Fargate that's there. It is very much in line with your current architecture and stuff. Mm -hmm. But runs into many less problems that you'll find than periodic, which I feel like is our number one foot gun that we have in custodian and we probably we should add have an issue, like uh, at least file an issue on documenting yeah. foot guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and because of this like we don't use periodic at all. We just do event based lambdas and then our own, you know, foot build runs that are our own schedules. Yeah, and we have seen folks go both, you know, waffle sort of between centralized and decentralized on the C7N org, those uh, those periodic policy runs. I say periodic, but I mean the, the C7N org, the compute-based ones. Because with the with the centralized, you do get a, I feel like it's a bit easier to control that stampeding herd type problem because you've got the some limit to the parallelism that's coming with C7N org. So you're not going to run across, you know, a, a thousand accounts all at once because C7N org won't do it <laughs> by default. Uh, but to your point, it's, I mean, it makes sense to, to fan out and go decentralized too, just to avoid the, the single point of failure. So that makes sense too. You got options. Mm -hmm. yeah. will go deal with a thousand accounts and we'll steal them, you know, given a certain concurrency size. Right. What? Yeah, the idea of like hitting the endpoint like at the same exact time across all of them, it, it tends to avoid that out of the box, I feel like. Yeah, uh, it does. It does. But it's designed to very much around that mentality. Okay, so it, basically the idea is, um, you know, we're leaning towards not wanting to add support for this because it's supported by other mode types. Is that kind of the main gist of it? Yeah, the gist of it is, is that there's a certain intractability around the scaling periodic mode um and that is already catered for by um providing any other form of compute and starting with the standard pull mode and there's a boatload of benefits that avoid exact some of the exact problems you're having now and will likely other problems that you'd also have okay so if we were i mean if you know we're Basically, you were already kind of using and deploying out, you know, many things using periodic. Um, as far as tackling the the use case of needing to randomize things, you guys are thinking that should be handled by the deployment orchestration engine instead of within the the logic of the. Uh, um, saying you don't need to randomize if you switch your computer, like that, like the problem that problem goes away. I'd say. Um, if you are using a periodic and just executing the policies and in, in you, you don't need to randomize because it's already in go. You're already you're not dealing with concurrent things that like are trying to pull data down repeatedly because you're also taking advantage of the cache. You should probably see like significant huh. API reduction actually in this context. But then do we also have to centralize because if it's still spread out and and if they all run at the same time, then we're still uh, bombarding the API. Again, like you're, if you're not, periodic is effectively fully independent. Like, so assuming all decentralized, both both scenarios, periodic is basically saying, let's spin up a bunch of things at the same time and mm -hmm. they're all going to hammer the API. Mm -hmm. And there's no opportunity to share cache. If you use any form of compute, you're going to have the opportunity to share a cache and they can go through them uh with uh, and, and you still have the same schedule and so you remove you're actually reducing your api calls by like o n of where n in this context is um like the number of policies against the same resource type at a minimum and then as Sunny alluded to there, there's additional savings from other um other caching with the guards related it's unclear to me how uh, how caching it helps here, because as you mentioned, it is account, regions, resource type. Right. Here so we let's have... say I have. Sorry, go ahead. 
No, no, go ahead. I was just saying we, we uh, have a no, thousand of a uh, thousand of account and we need the, this the cash in this context is, is like if I have if you have 50 policies and it's again decentralized, I have mm -hmm. one account, one region of target. I have 50 policies against EC2 or 100 policies. And if you're using periodic mode, you're fetching all of the EC2 instances in that account region times the numbers of policies. Can, 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 we, use, using, uh, can we use an example of quota? Uh, let's say quota right now. I, we, let's just say we, we need to handle for querying quotas. Quota API. Okay, so, so quota, in the, I mean, the example is the same. I, it's like it's like the where is the where is the rate limit boundary and what what does the cash actually hold is the primary thing the rate limit boundary is typically account region service and mm -hmm. sometimes down further to the api call yeah. but yeah. in this context the cash is going to hold the account region service mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. um in that context like using uh, using most any services like if you have a hundred policies against it you're going to be able to keep the cash between them and additionally because you're in you're also reducing concurrency <laughs> against that thing i think in this context where, it, where your service quota thing it's actually about reducing the concurrency that you're dealing with as well oh actually hold on um because no, you're um, serial you're you, if, you know, and typically in a poll mode on compute you're going to be serial through them as well, uh, instead of being concurrent. Maybe maybe there's something I'm missing here. Let me ask Stephen real quick here. The limit that we're hitting, is that within the account or is the limit somehow across all the different accounts that we have? That's a, that's, a, that's a limit on the AWS side. It's not the par account, par region TPS limit. So it's we are actually yeah. like doing <laughs> Kind of like a denial of service attack on yes. AWS. Are you saying yeah. we actually yeah. brought down yeah. AWS API? Uh, uh, yeah. Again, yeah. you're gonna you're going to greatly reduce how it's behaving. Yeah, it's just you're going to greatly reduce the account. A, you're, I mean, if you're bringing out a service, well, the service team is gonna get to go, you know, make that more resilient. But B, like you're greatly reducing the currency that you're dealing with by because you're gonna be serial through it as well. Yeah. How many policies do you have running against quotas in e in, in each account? Just one. Just one, but we have two or three thousand account, for example, and they're gonna bombard the quota service API. It's, it's about oh, uh, roughly. Yeah. It's about I think it's about twenty thousand lambda function running uh, in like 10, 15 minutes time frame. Right? So fifteen twenty uh, minutes. Just, just to make sure everybody understands, when you run these as a Lambda function, every Lambda pulls the API, and when the Lambda closes, the cache dies. It's gone, yeah. nothing else can use yeah. it. So your next Lambda needs to pull it again, API. And the next one needs to pull it again, API. And the next one needs to pull it again, from the API. Yes, we understand. And that's what's killing you, which is why we oh, use compute like, and well, we can't use the cache so heavily. But, but the, the number of policy that we're doing is, is fairly low it, i think it's the number of accounts and that's that's what i'm trying to get to is it's it's, caching, not it that, will help. Are, it's also they're all firing at the same time right? yes yes yes, concurrency. yes exactly so that's what i was trying to get to is you know running compute is just not getting enough right i think compute as you get into it it's like first serial serially and then of course uh not all running yeah not, not running all at the same so, time I mean, it's serial across the policies that you put into the poll mode. Like, um, I mean, it sounds like you're saying that the service code API has some special yeah. issues um, yeah. that it's not maybe not quite um, in part of Amazon architecture, regards to cell base division. Um, but I mean, I, 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 I think I'm game to explore that a little bit more, but that may require talking to um, some AWS teams, but like the, this guidance that <laughs> came universally from the crowd, uh, it, it, I think stands regardless of that. But there may be something specific to this particular service, but that requires some exploration. 
Hey, I, I want to kind of bring back the conversation back to what Stephen was asking. Uh, instead of talking about what's the best practice and you know compute versus non-compute and stuff. So um we we cannot change our current you know structure deployment. You know, we we can't use a single account for uh resiliency for security and compliance, various reasons. Uh there's a reason why we, we have we end up with current uh, deployment structure. And it's simply we need to randomize um the execution time and schedule in the in, in the periodic mode and uh we have we, we we can we basically have a two options one is we we have a, a deployer support we create our own uh talk internal token and randomize the current time or this may be benefit to you know c7n uh, other user in c7n um if c7n support currently we have like a uh what's the rate you know uh rate bracket one day or something right for daily maybe we can have support for you made bracket one day random or something so the c7n will generate a random schedule for for, for a day daily schedule the same for weekly hourly and that's 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 about it and um you know if you guys think that's that will benefit to other user then maybe we can make a full request otherwise we will make a you know internal change to our deployer system I appreciate that perspective, but the underlying randomization is to the scheduler itself. And it's not clear to me that, and it also needs to find sort of a randomization scope and also requires parsing expression. And like, there's a lot of little things there that are finicky, frankly. Um, and it's not clear, like, I, I think it's, like and, and by the way, like I said in, in the sidebar, like using compute does not mean you have to be single account. You can be decentralized, like a hundred percent. That is totally fine, totally possible, and totally like supported. Like you're running into particular limits, and I think what Darren was bringing up is it's not clear if the limits are something that's specific to the service. Um, but any use of cash here will also <laughs> essentially decrease, like if you consolidated your, we're able to consolidate your periodics into a poll in a decentralized fashion, you'll also get natural randomization effectively because you're going to be like, as I go through the, the other resource policies, you won't necessarily hit this one particularly. Um, whereas when you do poll base, sorry, uh, when you get periodic, you're, you're effectively, they're, they're all firing at the same time regardless. You'll get natural randomization anyways, um, and you'll get a lot of other benefits from cash up for the other other periodic policies that you may have. Um, I think, I mean, it, for what's worth, I think there is still a path, like, to, if, if you really cannot move off of periodic, um, you can do very, you know, variable expansion or yeah. um, policy conditions to, you know, achieve the goals you're trying to get to. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Kapil said, it's it's a much larger thing to introduce something like a, a random on a schedule. Um, I mean, even things, even closed systems where you, you know the entire state, like uh, song randomization, uh, like on iTunes, like they had to, when they introduced like purely random uh, uh, song playback, like it it wasn't random enough. Like there are things you have to do to make it, you know, more and more random than uh, uh, pick a random day. Like you can, you can go random and all of them could end up on the same day in the same hour within five minutes, right? I, I think for me, I, I, I got the answer, and is that um, uh, uh, for, for things that we want to do at scale, yeah, uh, to run our compute. And as uh, Kapil said, Kapil doesn't uh, doesn't mean uh, centrally running it from a single account. Uh, we can set things up uh, to run on target account. I think Todd was also mentioned. That's what they have done too. Uh, but uh, uh, still, so the, uh, there has to be some sort of either serially or, or randomization to it because uh, with quota service, 
again, it's not the limit within one account. Okay? So even though you know, with caching and, and, and it's not within that one account, uh, I don't think that's going to solve the problem of the quota service API that if um, all of a sudden across 3,000 accounts, it all hits the API at the same time. Um, it actually you know, cause issue with the quota service API. So yeah, there's some. So there has to be some sort of uh, randomness to it too. So on the randomization, like in just injecting that in the policy, I mean, so you talk about variables, one thing that recently mm -hmm. went in for CSUN and left because, you know, shift left stuff tends to run in like CI pipelines where all, everything gets exposed as environment variables. So it made a lot of sense to be able to expose those, ex expose those environment variables directly to policies. Um, uh, if that provides a reasonable path for some of the randomization that you're looking for, then um, I think that that's definitely like in scope if we want it, if that's of interest. I think for us, uh, at this point, it's too hard for us to change the way we run, deploy and run our policies. Uh, I think what we're going to do instead is uh, we do have an orchestration layer that sit, that, that sit on top of Cloud Custodian. That's how we deploy uh, um, policies to our target accounts. I think that's where we're going to do the injection of uh, uh, randomizing the the cloud watch uh, um, schedule, uh, the, the cron expression, we, we just randomize it at that level. I don't know if that's gonna solve everything, but uh, I think that's what we're gonna try out. At least I think for this particular issue, I think it will solve. But um, as we ran more and more into uh, similar cases like this, it, it, it then might not uh, work uh, as things scale more out. And if you're Dosing the service quota APIs by <laughs> by accident here. That seems like a support ticket that should go in so that Amazon can fix their service to not be dosed by one customer. <laughs> that seems like a failure on their end. <laughs> yeah, maybe Steven and Nahito, maybe that's something we should uh, open a ticket to uh, AWS too. Yeah, I mean, this is something we uh, we observed recently, but as uh, Darren mentioned, uh, we, 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 we saw similar behavior in the config uh, policy when we are like, tagging. There was uh, all kinds of you know discussion with AWS support because we are not obviously hitting the, the TPS. It was like three TPS or something, and we are not even making that. And yeah, we, we concluded it was AWS size, the problem in the AWS side. But yeah, whether it's a, well, the, I mean, if, if it's a decentralized, the centralized, there is a, you know, um, uh, security compliance concern we cannot go. If it's decentralized, we will have the same problem because we will end up deploying, you know, for each account, each region. And I mean, this you know, that we have same problem. Um, so yeah, sounds like we have to go, go with our internal solution for now. Yeah, thank you guys for the lively discussion around this, Kapil and, and Sunny and AJ for uh, yeah chiming in in the chats and, and yeah um, letting us kind of raise this and figure out the best solution. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for bringing it up. It does seem like a valid issue that I know we've got. We have some information on the Lambda side in the in the docs about what gets disabled by default. Like I I know there's a, a note in there about disabling caching, but it's I think it's not clear enough, and I could be, I think you, you've mentioned this before too, that it's not clear enough the sort of walls that we're, we're setting people uh, up to run into when we use periodic a lot. So um, I, I think separate from the Lambda mode stuff, um, we should call out periodic specifically, and I think you mentioned that, uh, just making those documents a little bit, a little bit clearer and mentioning maybe bringing some of this consolidating condensing some of this discussion into a into a warning block or something in the docs so it's a little clearer what's going to happen and what the alternatives are uh, so thank you thank you all um all right that was that was a good one <laughs> do we have uh uh thanks darren uh we exhausted darren <laughs> Uh, any other issues or PRs that are worth bringing up? Or did that, that last discussion raise anything else for anybody? 
uh, about the release tomorrow. I did notice that the Docker build last night failed. I'm hoping it's it's transient, but tracking that for the release. And there's still going to be at least a version bump PR coming as well prior okay. to the release. All right. Uh, one other thing I'll mention, I saw, I think this came in when I was out, but there's this, um, someone on someone else on the call may have run into this. I know a while back we had an issue where if you tried to interpolate the uh, the now value when you're we running in uh, in a serverless mode, it would expand that now to the current time when you provisioned a function, uh, which was generally not what people wanted, and you sort of had to work around it by adding double braces. Uh, and I had a change to fix that a while back by making it not expand now when we're running serverless modes. Uh, but it seemed like because this is like bringing it full circle back to periodic. <laughs> if you go to run a periodic policy, it is both serverless and pull mode. And so it looks like there's an issue where that was just not expanding now at all. Um, and I think that's what's going on. But I'm just mentioning here, this is a good issue. I know Kapil, you already commented on it. Um, I will go dig into that because if it's broken, I broke it. Um, so I just got to kind of dig into it. So would that also be the cause of, say, in GCP, it not, uh, when when processing GCP tags, it going, I can't parse this as a date, or I can't add this as a tag when using now. Um, and Possibly. you have to include the formatting information in the um, curly braces. Yeah, that that could be well, if it's trying to if it's not part if it's not resolving expanding that your your format to a date and then it sees curly braces at runtime then yes that could be it's it's much it more than a little different it's yeah like these restricted tag values because it's it is interpolating the value and just like, oh you you're have to it format is. it the right way to get yeah, it to, for yeah. just for you to take it okay. yeah because GCP is so particular about what it will take in a label value gotcha um. It's unpleasantly particular, to be honest, but, <laughs> you know. All right. Well, that's, um, yeah. I, I So I bring this up just in case. I mean, we've got a pretty good crew here with uh, running uh, policies in a bunch of different modes. So in case somebody sees something weird, just, uh, you know, calling it to your attention that, that I may have busted something. And um, it looks like, I, I think part of this is that when we go to load policies, uh, like every command wraps this kind of this, this load policies uh, internal uh, method that that's going to do this uh, the variable expansion and so we might have to just tweak the way that i'm saying don't expand for serverless and make it more so it's like don't expand during a provisioning phase even though i don't think it's super obvious to tell that uh the way the logic is now but um i'll look at it and make it sure it's like you just seen a switch like you got like we probably have some is it since checks and for periodic, we probably need to be like, we probably need to have a list or something, um, or like some, or maybe we need to double check on on subclassing to, to determine it. Yeah, I my my first thought was like I was saying don't don't expand now if we're serverless, and I was thinking oh maybe I need to say like do expand if it's pull, but then that might go yeah. So I, basically, I just need a test for periodic mode, <laughs> and to make sure that we do the right thing. Uh, when we're loading and when that's, we're provisioning that's for periodic mode, that doesn't say periodic mode. That's that also very by providers, but yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we'll have some update on this one. Uh, so thanks for the report there. Uh, okay, I think that's all I've got in here. Does anybody else have any topics to bring up? This is PRs issues or sort of anything else. It's wildcard time. All right. The silence says that we're done here, and you are free to go out into the world. Uh, thanks, everybody. We'll catch up in Slack and see you again in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all.